All right, uh, Canada, uh, the Canadian VA suggests that a vet just go ahead and kill himself. You're like, that didn't happen. Actually, it did. And uh, never surrender. Jared, you read the book on killing, right? Yes. It's been, probably been a while. It's been a while for yes. me, but you remember one of the uh, the lessons that Grossman talked about from on killing regarding making it easier for the predator to kill you? Yes. What is one of those lessons? Um, to make yourself avert your well, eyes. There's a lot of stuff. It's well, it's like or turn to, your back. You remember that? Yes. So, uh, in the book on killing, the uh, Grossman says he talks about like humans killing humans, we, and we just talked about this on the was it the last public hour where we did the we didn't talk specifically about the on killing book, yeah, but we talked about the ki- the guy trying to kidnap the kid and the lady turning around, yeah, and running away, yeah. Was that on the public hour or was that on the grad program? I believe that was public. I can check. Man. Okay. Well, if you're interested in seeing that video, go back and watch last week's episode. Mm-hmm. Now Dad can finish his lesson. So anyway, Grossman, he, he opined, he, he, he basically, he wrote a, a book and, and on killing. Some people think on combat is a better book, but the, both of them are important. And, and he's not like, for instance, he, he had a, one of his things is he's like, he attacks video games. And I was like, you're way off on that. But, um, it was last it's week's been long uh, enough since Friday the book bonus now. hour. Oh, it was okay, the bonus it was Friday last bonus week's hour. Friday bonus hour. If you all want to hear that, get us at tg.com. Uh, Thanks for looking that up. There. You're welcome. Now, one of the things that I was just thinking is that it's been long enough now since On Killing was published that there's got to be some sort of actual real scientific study on the way video games are and if they affect children and, and their motivations in life, and if they don't, then, so or fun, if they do, then how do they? Fun fact, I'll tell you Jared, what affects them more is the, freaking pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. Yeah, fun fact, Jared. The answer is, yes, there have been studies. There have been like a thousand because every six years, a new politician comes out and blames video games for everything wrong in the world, and then more studies come out it's like, no, it's fine. Look, here here they are from Harvard. You mean Oxford, like, like Yale. Leland Rocket Launcher? Lee. I was going to say like a re Yee. Yeah, that's funny. Rocket Launcher. Yeah, there have yes. been a bunch of those studies. Yes, a re Rocket Launcher Yee. It's like video games are evil. And I'm going to... So what was the thing, that <laughs> the good lesson that was talked about in this book? Well, um, you know, well, we're going to talk about that in the in the Never Surrender one. But uh, I think we've gone beyond the need to do the opening music, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's do that. Yeah. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so, if you guys remember uh, our boy Leland Yee, Rerun Yee, the uh, the state senator from California who actually won re-election while under federal indictment for not only uh, corruption, uh, money, he was taking bribes from, well, anybody who would give him a bribe, uh, and he was also... Uh, instrumental in funneling and facilitating weapons up to and including military rocket launchers for the Chinese mafia in San Francisco. But one of Leland Yee's, one of his platform things at being a Democrat was that, uh, that uh, he stood at a podium with with video games in his hand. And we got a picture of him here. It's like, uh, and video games are leading to violence and we must ban and prohibit video games. Like maybe you running guns for the Chinese mafia that might maybe facilitate violence. No, it's not me. 
uh, taking million dollar bribe and getting guns for Chinese mafia. No, 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 no. It's video game. Uh, so anyway, he was he was a a corrupt piece of human filth politician, Democrat, California, convicted on federal racketeering, uh, and corruption. He got a grand whopping total of four years in jail. You could kill a puppy and do more time in jail than Leland Yee did. I, I need to read this because this is amazing. Okay. I'm catching up on the Discord stuff. Okay. And it's not related to what you just said at all, but I think you'll appreciate this. Okay. Mike McGrath in the Discord says that we just had a guy rescue his puppy from the jaws of a gator. The dude got dragged underwater, wrenched the dog free, then had to get his own hand free from the teeth. Okay. Here's what comes the cool part. Are you ready? Yeah. Dude had a cigar in his mouth and his jaws from beginning to end. Didn't lose it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, Lee Lin Yi uh did four years in prison for all of that. Didn't he get a bunch of votes while he was in prison? Oh yeah, no, yeah. He was under federal indictment and uh, got like, you know, two hundred thousand votes or something. That's how awesome California is. But I digress, and if as I digress, wanted their guns. Dang it! As I digress, that's right. Shrimp boy needed his guns. Let's go ahead and uh, remind you guys: if you're in the Discord, that you can ask questions. If you're not in the Discord, you can ask questions to anybody. I mean, if you, there's somebody in the room with you, you can turn to them and ask them a question, but you can't ask it to us. Uh, <laughs> the German water faucet. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> that's how they're going to get hot water in germany <laughs> no one knows what you're talking about please explain. oh okay that's funny it's in the may maze channel it's in the may maze channel yes it's got a candle holder attached to the faucet and it's heating the faucet heating the water as it comes out with candles because yeah. in case you didn't know europe is oh, about nice. to collapse that would, that would work mm. that would really work you'd have to run the water really slow though yeah it's very slowly isn't that right. of, isn't that basically what a propane or like a like a fight like a tr traditional hot water tank is? It just a bunch up. of candles. No, it, well, it, it's kind of it's a big <laughs> fire, isn't it? <laughs> it does. I mean, it heats the water. It warms the water up in a big tank before it gets through the pipe. But yeah. yeah. All right, let's talk about Duracoat. Da -da -da, Duracoat finish firearm. I will say, of all the like transition Whoa. videos and stuff I've made, are we okay? Hi. Yeah, we're good. I just wasn't expecting your voice to come out of the microphone. Surprise! <laughs> it came out of the speakers. Oh, well, that, there we yeah. go. Uh, I was just going to say, of all the transition videos and stuff I've made, that one's probably my favorite. It might be the, it might be the music. That it does it. Did you hear that? I did hear that. All the potential burglars in a tri-state area just ran away. They ran. So all you have to do is you don't even need to buy ammunition for your shotgun. Just just rack the pump and they'll they'll pee their pants and run away. Cause because we're assuming that the average uh urbanite crackhead knows and will recognize the sound of a shotgun pumping because we all know that they're that they're sportsmen. <laughs> but this, ladies and gentlemen, is as I hold it up for the camera. This is the Mossberg 590 Sierra. We talked about this. This is the gun that is designed to accept and feed shells from the one and three quarter all the way up to three inch. And yes, I did do it in the baby poop yellow bush green pattern. Uh, so this is the Mossberg 590 Sierra. And the uh, I did add this i added the stream light weapon light to it watch this three two one <laughs> there we go so i uh how do i like the stream light weapon light uh, i like it just fine uh, we've only had this it on this gun for i don't know a month or so so it's not like i have a 
a lot of time with it, but um, it's we've come a long way, baby. Uh, used to be when I was coming up, if you wanted a, a weapon light on a shotgun, you had to buy the one from Surefire, and it was about four hundred bucks. And the original one had an incandescent bulb. Oh no way! Yeah, I so, still have one of those. But this one uses an LED. It uses two. Sorry about that. that is uses mucho better. -o. It uses two uh, uh, lithium batteries, one, two, three, a lithium batteries. It's powerful. You can, it has activator switches on the left and on the right. So you can click it on with the, from the left or you can click it on from the right. Uh, good thing. Good thing. And it's a, it's, it's a responsible thing to do to have a light because we cannot, despite what Joe Biden says, we cannot legally and morally just shoot at shadows. Uh or scary sounds, because that's how you end up in prison. Uh, you end up in prison by shooting at shadows and scary sounds. Uh, unless, of course, you are a politician, then you can just do whatever you want, I guess. But uh, is there a video of the guy pulling the... Yeah. There's a video of the guy pulling his dog out. I'm about to watch and see how long with, it is. With the, uh, two minutes with the cigar in his mouth. Now. Oh, yeah, two minutes and 19 seconds. Let's do it. Oh, that's not a very big gator. <laughs> it's a little gator. F finish the finished firearms thing first. Anyway, so, ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, if you like that, if you like what I just showed you, if you think, man, that's that's a pretty good looking, uh, it's a pretty good looking shotgun. I like the way you did that. I like the baby poop yellow and bush green combination. Well... What I think you should do is you can go to contact us. Go to the follow the the, the link that's in the show notes uh, to Duracoat's website, and then you click on contact us, and it says send a note. And you put your first name, last name, email, and you put the message in there, and you say yes, baby poop yellow. I will buy that. I will buy the baby poop yellow. I will buy the bush green, uh, and send it to them. And it may be, uh, this is one of those crowdfunding or crowdsourcing, or I guess we call it crowdsourcing. Uh, they need to know that you're serious. And if you are serious, and if you think that's a good looking pattern, I'll show it to you one more time. Boop. If you think that's a good looking pattern and you'd like to do that with your own guns, uh, you'd like a Bush War traditional, well, then you can. Uh, just ask very nicely, and Duracoat may provide that to you. Uh, I, I haven't checked in with Amy yet uh, since we've been doing this, uh, and I hope that you guys are are polite and not being rude. Because uh, if you are, I'll fire you right now. I will. I'll fire fired. you right now. You fired. All right. So SDS Imports is the official. Title sponsor of Student of the Gun Radio. Thank them for doing that. That's why you don't have to pay a nickel. You're paying nothing to listen to this show because we have sponsors. We have sponsors like SDS Imports. Uh, they have the Tokarov shotguns. They have the TSAS pistols. They have accessories. Uh, they're doing a lot of shotgun stuff. They're doing a lot of 1911 stuff. They've got the... Uh, the px9 gen 3 uh which is a tremendous pistol it won't quit that's the one that i did the thousand round torture test on uh and people are like well when did it break when did it stop working it didn't oh come on man I'm like oh no it just didn't uh and the truth is is that's what we expect today uh we expect that today if you want, and the other thing that I think is really pretty badass from from TSOS is they have a U.S. Army GI 1911A1 that is designed, built, and it looks like the old World War II guns. Now, you say, I can get one of those from Colt or Inland, yeah, for $1,000. But the uh, the one from TSOS is a forged frame, forged barrel, uh, forged slide, all steel hardwood grips for msrp of 439 that's righteous that is righteous so check those guys out at uh, sdsimports.com 
All right, moving on, moving on. Jared, what, what kind of activity have we gotten on the, the Juxy site here lately? Have, we, has, have the numbers gone up? Because if they haven't... I have to give it a look. And we'll you guys out there are screwing up. com slash... Actually, that's wrong. It's studentofthegun.com slash Juxy, J-U-X-X-I. And that takes you directly to the Student of the Gun channel. Go there, subscribe to the channel. 2198 is all we have on there. It's, uh, it's kind of sad, guys. Yeah, we should have way more than that. Yeah, we should have way more than that. I know how many listeners we have to this show. We should have thousands and it is, thousands. This is a lot more than that, so um, I'm going to need you guys to, to Step get it up. It. If you go to studentofthegun.com slash Juxi, that's J-U-X-X-I, it'll take you directly to, ch to the channel. All of the videos that Student of the Gun has ever produced will be on this platform. Yep. So if you want to go watch stuff from the past, then you can do that. Yeah, have you have you guys checked out the uh, the night fission AR fifteen front sight video that I did yet? Uh, if you have not, you should. Uh, the reason that I brought that up, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up right now. If you guys have ever thought about, well, I've got a standard AR fifteen, you know, A two front sight housing or whatever, and I was thinking about putting a tritium front sight in it, and I say, go for it go for it they're easier to see than the, than the standard traditional blued steel you know uh post but the there are companies out there that sell uh front sight replacements with tritium in them and they are essentially a oh uh, what do i want to call it a one to four now if you bzo that is battle sight zero or zero your ar-15 you know that we BZO with the front sight, right? You guys know that. You should know that. We don't BZO with the rear sight. You bottom it out, and then you make all your, your adjustments with the front sight. Well, the, stat the standard modern one, now the old M16s were five clicks, and then the new ones are, like the new M4s and stuff, are four clicks. Yeah. Well, a half... Yeah, what, basically what I laid down is, and you say, well, who cares, Paul? Well, the, the trick is, is the mm, the lesser products, in order to adjust it, you have to do, a with a tritium, you have to do a full 360-degree turn, which is two full inches of elevation at 25 meters and eight inches of elevation at 100 meters. That's, That's fine. What's eight inches? I yeah, mean. what's eight inches amongst friends? That's what she said. Um, but the night vision one, it's actually pretty smart. What they did is they made it so that even though it's a tritium, you can still do quarter click adjustments with it if you know what you're doing. And uh, I did a video about that. And if you'd like to watch it, then you can. And if you'd like the student of the gun night vision accurate sights for your G-Lock or your Smith & Wesson M&P or your uh, what's the one? that everyone's all giggitied about they were a couple of years ago they're all giggitied about the uh, cz the p10 charlie oh yeah oh yeah i remember everybody was like like peeing their pants about the 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 cz p10 charlie that was the new hotness i don't know if it's still the new hotness it was the new hotness um way back when but uh oh man so the uh the P10 Charlie uh, has been upgraded, uh, according to uh, this the website that they discontinued the P10 Charlie in 2018 and have, and have upgraded to the new. That's probably why it got so people were giggitied about it, and they they upgraded it to a new model. So, well, there you go, there you go. So, uh, cat in the hat, and that be that, Buster Ryan. And let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is, are we going to talk about that one? Yeah. We are? Did, did we talk about this one? I missed no. it? No. No. So uh, let's see. If we go to the uh, the high dash point. <laughs> oh, oh, man. High dash point firearms.com, that is. Yeah. High dash point firearms.com dot mil dot USA dot org. Dot UK. <laughs> dot UK. Dot <laughs> uh, UK. Oh, it's it's show season. Oh, dear Lord. Kay, I was talking to Kayla on the phone the other day, and she was talking about getting ready for shot. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh. 
coming up very soon. It hurts my brain. Do we yet have our status if we're, if we're going to be there or not? <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose yeah. we will. Yeah, we will. We'll go. We got to go, right, Jared? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We gotta go. I, haven't, I haven't been since. I'm not wearing Ruth a mask. Born, so. Yeah. I'm not wearing a mask. Yeah, I haven't, and I'm been, not... I haven't been since the since it all started. You, long, we were there. A long time ago. No, we were there right right. When when you were freaking out because there was all these Asian people walking around Las Vegas with masks on their face. Yeah. And, you're and like, I was we right to get, be no, to be scared. You're like, we got to get out of here before we get something. I was that scared and nervous. Yeah, but we we, we probably. The, the truth, is, truth it, is, if you talk to people who were at SHOT 2020, they're like, yeah, we probably all got it. Yeah. And then got over it and moved on with our lives. So the great American outdoor show is coming up. I believe they do that in, uh, on the East coast in Pennsylvania. Is high point going to be there? Uh, yeah. High point's going to be there and they're going to be there and they're going to be at shot. And 20. Real quick. When, for those of you who don't remember or no, uh, when is shot this year? Uh, I'm just going to look that up. It's probably the 22nd to the mm, they 22nd kinda, of it's 17th. the January 17th to the 20th of ah, 2023. Okay. And lost wages uh, at the Venetian and the Caesars. They're still gonna. They're still gonna try and do that, huh? They got the the extras. Mm. Last year was a ghost town, if you recall. Last year, like most of the major exhibitors didn't show up, so that they did things like. They they took what was going to be, what was it, the Ruger booth or something, and they put chairs in it. <laughs> oh, nice. They, they op- it was like, because Mar- like Mark was there. areas? Yeah. He's, ah, they're that's like, smart. They're like, take a load off. Have a seat. And you're like, isn't this a $50,000 booth space? Shh, da, 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 da. Don't worry about it. Um, Yeah, he said day one was like, he said Thursday, the floor was like Sunday. You know how Sunday it's just. The, the last few people walking around. Yeah. He said that was Thursday. But maybe this year will be different. Of course, we we Is have... NRA show? Huh? You're talking about NRA show? No, I'm talking about shot. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I'm not, I'm not usually a big fan of these things, but just because, like, you know, big conventions and lots of people there. I'm actually looking forward to going this year. Yeah. I haven't been in, like, yeah, when was the last time I went to a convention for work? It was 2020. No, it wasn't. Was it 20? Oh, yeah, it was 2020. Yes, you were there with me. You crazy. I, I, was, I, I know it was there, but I was thinking 2019 is everything. No, it okay, was 2020. Jared? Yeah. Thought I heard smoke detectors. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. So, yeah, we will be at SHOT Show 2023, and that'll be a good time. Yeah, that's it. There's, that's that. And we, of course, we won't have had the, uh, we still have a, a midterm election coming up before that ah some bitch (laughs) which is a word that we're allowed to say on the radio because that means a female dog in heat yeah that's Uh, right there's a news story that we might yeah it's uh, that's been around he said that a a few days ago oh really i guess we haven't talked about it on the show yet but speaking of female dogs we have a video to play (laughs) yay ah video to play so, so uh, well, do we just want to, because we, we're, we're alluding to it, we didn't actually say this. Yeah, thing. we've got a video to play right here that has a, um, I don't All know right. if it's a female dog or a male dog in it, but we can it, play that. There you All go. Right. You just have to use your imagination to figure out what we were talking about. It was a wild encounter that took a terrifying turn in Florida. Surveillance video shows the moment Richard Wilbanks jumped into action after an alligator grabbed his puppy gunner and dragged the dog into the water behind his house. Adrenaline kicked in and you know, I just went right in the water after the gator and gunner. For nearly 20 seconds, it was a wrestling match between man and gator. Richard with what appears to be a cigar in his mouth the entire time, gunner's life on the line. In the end, Richard was able to pry Gunner from the small predator's grip, allowing the dog to say, later, Gator. Oh, it was just a shock. It happened so fast that, uh, you know, instinct just took over. Three-month-old Gunner managed to escape with only a small wound. Richard ended up with some cuts on his hands. 
everything's going through my mind. And he said an alligator, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. I, I mean, I really did not grasp it. Okay, the dramatic rescue say. was captured as part of a... You got to be kidding me? This is in Florida, right? Hey, lady, do you know what alligator's favorite food is? Dog. Okay, she, dogs she are might like... have been talking about him f deciding to uh, pry the dog out of the alligator's yeah. mouth. You've got to be kidding me. Like, like, come on. An alligator would never come up out of the water and attack a dog. That just never happens. Actually, that happens all the time. It's a tasty treat. Alligators, and we've been, I've known this since we lived, remember we lived in Florida? Yeah. Jared, you well, don't well, probably well, remember it, but ago. you were a little, little I remember kid. the pond that we would swim in when it rained. Yeah. So we, we lived in Florida, and when I lived in Florida in the early 90s, I learned from the residents down there and the, the sheriff's deputies and the, the ODNR guys and stuff that, that if it's one thing an alligator loves, it's dog. There's signs everywhere. Do not walk your dog by down. You know, they every lake, pond, whatever has a sign that says, "Do not walk your dog." Well, why not? I like to walk my dog down by the by the lake. It's pretty. You know, we're gonna get pictures of lakes without signs now. No, I know so they're like, yeah, I have a lake and there's no sign. No, no, no. Um. Yeah. yeah. Also, you said er you said earlier it's like ah, that's not a very big gator. I bet the gunner that was a freaking well, yeah, gator. yeah. I mean, um, it was strong enough to roll and roll the human with it. Yeah, I would. I would say that's when you you take your pistola and you put it right on top of Mister Gator's head and pow. You can't just kill it. Okay, sure you can. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. We talked about sights. We talked about camouflage. We talked about alligators. Now let's talk about you listening up and listening a little bit louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's what we're going to do. All right. So if you have not been paying attention, you should be paying attention. Start paying attention. And uh, we're going to tell you what you need to know. But right now, we're going to jump over to our Brownells Bullet Points of the Week. Bing, bang, boom. All right. Uh, uh, probably every week I, I listen to someone or I talk to someone or someone says something about guns and gadgets and things and stuff. And uh, if you've been listening to us for any, any amount of time, you'll know that one of our big recommendations is before you decide to buy the latest widget what's-its, just to bolt or screw onto your rifle, you need to take some training. Uh, focus on training first. But there is one thing that you can add to a rifle that will almost immediately improve its performance because it helps. Not the gun. The gun knows what to do. Okay. I, I, Jared, you like how many times have you heard someone say, well, if I get this scope, my rifle will be more accurate? No, it won't. Yeah, oh yeah, this this scope will, this this scope makes your rifle more accurate. Actually, the rifle already knows what to do. The optic or the scope is for you. It's for your eyes. Uh, it's for the shooter. It helps you to perform better, not the gun, because the gun knows what to do. If you put that gun in a vice and had a robot go up and press the trigger, it would shoot all the rounds. Well, if it's a good rifle, would shoot all the rounds with no cloverleaf with no scope on it at all. The scope is for you. 
So I was I popped over to uh, Brownells, and I was looking at optics. And one of the things that uh, I was talking to my good friend James Yeager about before he departed was when I was working on the rifle book, the Marshall application of the rifle. Uh, he has literally thousands of students come through tactical response every year, right, uh, with rifles. And they come and they show up with whatever it is that they thought that they should buy and put on their gun. And for a school, that's fantastic because you get to see what works and what doesn't without having to invest a nickel. <laughs> if you're a firearms trainer, you get to to observe what happens when people show up with fill in the blank, right? And I asked him, I said, uh, when it comes to red dots, what have you had the what have your students had the greatest success with or the smallest or least amount of failure? And uh, he said, number one, aim point optics. Number one, best optics for one-to-one red dots, aim point. Number two, hollow sun. <gasps> Did you hear that, Jared? Yeah. yeah. People were falling out. They're crashing their cars. And, include that in the letter with the lakes with no signs. Yeah, and, and falling falling off their treadmills and stuff. I know he just didn't say hollow sun. Uh, I, I, I bought a red dot off of wish.com. Think that'll work? No. I'm going to go with no on that one. And then there isn't the, use for those, though. You wouldn't know what it is. Yeah. BB What's guns. that? What is, it's, to, it's to put on your uh, training guns. On your, 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 your solid garbage. plastic oh, training oh, yeah. guns. Now, I will yeah. say, I bought a giant laser pointer off of Wish, and it works fantastic. Oh, well, there you go. So if you guys want a there laser pointer, there you go. Mm, there you go. You could hook that to your gun, too. It'll yeah, be, and it'll, it'll show up in... Laser sight. So I wonder, I wonder where Wish is now with stuff. Remember they were... Like, it took me about seven weeks to get the laser pointer. Yeah, like two, three months out. And, and of course, sometimes it just doesn't show up. And who are you going to call? You're gonna call Ghostbusters. Yeah, you're going you're to call the, uh, the, the customer service at the Zhejiangwan province. Or they'll send you a note that said, hey, it was delivered. And you're like, no, it wasn't. And they're like, yes, it was. And you're like, no, it wasn't. I, I guess well, that's just that's the risk you take paying it, two dollars for a freaking electronic it, spatula or whatever. It's it's gambling. But back to the red dots. Thank you for distracting me, Zach. Back to the red dots. So, uh, number one, most reliable according to James Jager and Tactical Response, who has literally thousands upon thousands of students come through uh, every year with red dots on their rifles. Number one aim point number two hollow sun number three the mro that is those are the ones that people have had the most success with now am i telling you that if you show up with an acog that it won't work no i'm not telling you that uh and or uh a um what you call it uh a hws holographic weapon site an eotech no I'm not telling you that now, when it comes to optics, you say, well, how much should I spend on an optic? Well, I don't know. It depends on, on uh, what you plan to do with it. If it's for a fighting rifle, when we look at our rifles, is it a hobby gun? And you, this is where honesty, intellectual honesty comes in. Hobby guns versus uh, fighting guns. If you have a rifle and you look at that and you say, I may someday be called upon to save the lives of my family with that gun. There's a big freaking difference between looking at a rifle and saying, that's the tool I'm going to use to save my family's lives. And if that gun fails, my fa look at it like that. Look at the rifle and say, if this gun fails, my family will die. That's kind of important, isn't it? And that, that will help you sort out the hobby gun from the fighting gun. I would spend as much money as I could afford without going into debt. The truth of the matter with aim points is if you buy an aim point, you're probably going to be able to pass it down to your children, right? Now, there is an optic called the PRO, the aim point PRO. And it's not as compact as a T1 
or an H1 or a T2 or an H2 or whatever. It's not a micro. And it, it, it does have night vision setting. It's a little bit on the large side. You know, the funny thing about the PRO, Jared, mm. is people are like, ah, oh, it's super large. Ten years ago, it would have been standard. Yeah. We're so spoiled. Today. If you look at the MRO, it's super tiny. Yeah, the MRO is relatively small. It's miniature, some would say. Yeah. Well, it's not as small as like a, an RMR. But, so, but the, uh, the patrol rifle optic, the PRO, is less than $500, and it is an aim point, and it has a 30,000-hour run time on the battery. It's half MOA adjustable. It is night vision. Uh, night vision. <laughs> it's night vision compa- compatible. Uh, they also have an ACO. I have never tried the car, the ACO. Um, I'll have to admit to you guys that the, the Aimpoint Carbine Optic, the ACO, it's $419. Uh, it is not night vision capable. And the battery life is, drum roll please. I don't see it listed. Hmm. That's strange. It's not listed. Now, the, the, the battery life uh, on a T1, micro, micro T1 or T2, uh, is crazy. It's like 50,000 hours or something like that. <laughs> like 50,000 hours? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The hollow, the hollow suns are close. They're, they're close to that. The hollow suns are like 40,000 hours. So. What are some things that you have to consider when purchasing an optic for a rifle? Um, number one, do you want to mate it with night vision? If you want to mate it, uh, if, if not, then don't worry about it. Uh, are you going to co-witness it with your iron sights on your rifle? If you're going to, then you need to make sure that the mount is a co-witness mount. Not all of them are. Um, and then battery life and then reputation. You know, you're like, yeah, but this new company, this new company that just came out uh, and is producing things, there's there's only eighty nine dollars. Like, okay, cool, it's eighty nine dollars. That's fantastic for a hobby gun. But when it comes down to it, you need to look at your your firearms that you're carrying, that you're stat, you know, your staging or whatever, and say, have an honest discussion. Look at that thing and say, would I trust that tool? to be at, used to save the lives of my family, yes or no? And if the answer is no, then you're like, well, then why why are you messing with it? Why why did you choose it? Why do you have it? And you're like, well, uh, well, uh, what? It's, you know, we're not, we're not playing games here. We're not playing games here. Now, the, uh, the Comp M4 has actually come down in price because it's not the newest one anymore. The comp M, the aim point comp M4 is the one that the basically it's it's the I would say the 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 site that won the West. This was the one that was going overseas on guns in two thousand four, five, six, seven, eight over there. Guess guess the battery life on the comp M4. Sixty thousand hours. Close eighty. Oh wow. Good. And it has seven night vision settings. It has 16 settings total, seven night vision settings. This is the one that you can put on a rifle, throw it out of a helicopter, and the rifle will break before the sight breaks. That's funny. Seriously. Um, yeah, that, that uh, Super Dave had a story about, about being ejected from the back of a Humvee and landing on his M4 so hard that he was afraid that the barrel bent. Holy cow. And he had a comp M4 on it, and the comp M4 was still zeroed. He's like, that's, that's amazing. He said, that's when I knew. He said, I, I, I was ejected from the back of, a, of, a, of a, an, a Humvee, landed on my rifle, hit so hard that I was afraid the gun broke, and the optic was still good and zeroed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sold. Yep. Sold, sold. One of the one of the sales. I told you about the sales tricks with the when the the, the military and law enforcement sales guys go with with the with the aimpoint products. 
is they they say catch this and they throw it at you but they deliberately throw it so you can't catch it and it hits the ground and bounces right. and you have to pick it up and they're like oh i'm sorry throw it back to me and then they deliberately miss and let it bounce across the concrete then they put it on the rifle and it's still zeroed that's funny yeah so before you buy another widget gidget whatever to strap onto your rifle take a you know and, and that that's a fantastic point thanks for bringing that up jared before you buy ambidextrous controls and all kinds of mm, stuff, things, <laughs> dumb things to strap onto your rifle, look at your optic and put the money that you're going to spend on ambidextrous controls into your optic. You'll be far better off. You'll be far better off. All right, let us go ahead and move on now to Meek being quiet and Zach talking. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. That's what you should do. And if you're not doing that, you're wrong. Fix yourself. Now is when Jared or Zach talks about pre-orders and patches. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I get to talk again. So to all of you who have pre-ordered the Marshall application of the rifle book, uh, your order has gone out. And honestly, some people probably have already gotten it by now. So lucky you. Uh, thank you, everybody, who took advantage of the Labor Day. Uh, with, thankfully, not thankfully. As predicted, a lot of people did what I thought they would do, which is uh, when, once the Marshall application book came out, they just went ahead and bought all three. Uh, peeking in the speaker, got it. Uh, so in addition to that, now that's all taken care of, and those are all done and gone, and everyone's happy. Uh, the official Student of the Gun icon patches are on their way to us. And as soon as I have them in my grubby little hands, they will be available to go to your grubby little hands. So keep an eye on your email and listen into the show right here to know as soon as you can get your hand on one of these awesome patches. And guys, right. just so you know, yes, I did withhold plenty for us. Okay. So we can be greedy as well. <laughs> you have a picky to show on the uh, people. I can show whatever yes. I want. We, we, we learned show. our lesson with the uh, the original Sweet Buddha patches when we when we sold so many that we didn't we weren't able to keep any for ourselves. <laughs> That's one of the problems. I don't have one. Uh, yeah. I don't have one of the originals. I think I have one. One of the original cloth stitch ones. Oh no, I don't have one of those. Yeah, those are gone. Yeah, we we sold those. those were if you have one of the original Sweet Buddha stitched cloth patches. You have a collector's item. If you don't want it anymore, there ain't I'll no give more. you an address to send. That's right. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Student of the Gun Homeroom, brought to you by our friends at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Dot com. Do 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 All right, that's dangerous by Madison Rising because, well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why because this this show or this segment is about being dangerous on demand. We've got a horrible, horrible, horrible story to share from the is it Mississippi? Yep. Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, and this is, we'll talk about the uh, what Grossman said about uh, on killing and so on and so forth. But, uh, Jared, would you go ahead and, and give us the details? Yep. It says, this is from the dailywire.com. The title is, Horrifying Security Camera Footage Shows Robert Executed a Very Gracious Store Clerk Police. That's what the police said. A horrifying video showed a murder that unfolded in Tupelo, Mississippi at a convenience store on Sunday where a very gracious man working at the store was allegedly executed by the suspect. The Daily Journal reported that police charged 26-year-old Chris Copeland 
with capital murder for allegedly shooting 33-year-old 30, 30, uh, Parmveer Singh in the back of the head after ordering him to get on the floor of the Chevron Food Mart. Tupelo Police Detective Wes Kloak said that the security camera footage from inside the store showed the suspect walking into the store, pulling a gun out of his waistband, and pointing it at Singh. The report showed that the suspect was wearing an olive hoodie, yellow t-shirt, and colorful pajama bottom, a bottoms, uh, which match up exactly with a video on social media of the incident. The video also matched up with Cloak's description of the incident. Twitter censored one account that posted the video. The clerk is very gracious and even gave him a stack of money he didn't ask for, Cloak testified. He opened the safe for him and gave him a bank bag. The video showed Singh on the floor and the suspect jumping over the counter. And then this is a quote from Mr. Cloak. He said, the suspect walked up behind Mr. Singh and at point blank range executed him. The report said that the, the detective testified that Copeland walked over and retrieved a spent shell casing and then ripped out what he thought was a DVD recorder box and fled the store. Copeland had previously been convicted of felonies related to robberies and burglaries, which meant that he was banned from possessing a firearm. No. No. We need more gun control. If we had yep. more gun control, that wouldn't happen. That's right. If we had more gun control, this wouldn't happen. With 27 years in law enforcement, this may be one of the worst ones I've ever seen, Police Chief John Quacka said. The victim was literally executed in the back of the head inside the store where he was trying to make a living. It is just absolutely outrageous. The, prosecutors, the prosecutor said it best. It's monstrous. Copeland was denied bond, and since he was charged with capital murder, he will face either life without parole or the death penalty if convicted. I don't know why life without parole would be on the table. This monster needs to be removed from planet Earth. But ladies and gentlemen, let's go let's go ahead and go back to what we learned or what we should have learned from on killing. What uh, Grossman talked about in detail in the book on killing was how when the the recipient, when the victim, when the whatever, when you avert your eyes, when you turn around, uh, to the the attacker, you no longer you are no longer a human. You're just a thing. When you and and this is something that that liberals and Democrats will never admit. They will never talk about. You know, uh, is the fact that your subservience is actually more likely to get you killed. See, no, 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 that's no, no, that's the exact opposite. No, no, every, where I work, Jared, how many times have you heard this? Well, where I work, we have a policy about what to do if if they get robbed. What does the policy say? It says to just give them what they want. Yeah. In the event Comply. of a robbery, do not resist. Cooperate. Give them what they want. Da, 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 da. And, and those, those policy statements are written by people that will, are never going to be in a position to have to follow that advice. Yeah, the I, people I, I who would, write those never are the ones behind the counter with a gun in their face. I, I would love for somebody to take this story and like put it in front of one of those like gun control activists, like, oh, the police are your friends, just do, just, you know... Robbery isn't a big deal. It's all insured. Just give them what they want. Politicians. Yeah. And be like, hey, how about this? Did literally exactly everything that they were supposed to do perfectly. And he got shot in the back of the head for it. Yeah, he got murdered for his trouble. Has well, it always been a human thing to um, not fight back? No. No, absolutely when not. Did we, no. When, when, did, when did it? When we became a civilized come. society. No, in the current modern era. I mean, even in like the ancient era, there weren't um, the majority of humans wouldn't have done the not fight back thing, and there was just like a small group of quote unquote warrior class people that would fight back. 
Or or was it more likely for people to fight back? Because this is literally just accepting victimization. Mm. Not the, I, well, I'm pretty positive that back in the olden days, it was more socially acceptable to fight back and defend yourself like that. Well, see, what? now we have a situation where we have we have those who I wrote a whole article about this. Uh, what was the art? What was the title of the article I wrote? Oh, uh, 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 I can't remember. I've written so many, but uh, essentially, yeah. When the people who make these policy statements, they are these, uh, you know, yeah, the, like the 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 general that says we never fire until fired upon. It's like, well, what if when we're fired upon, that's then we get shot and die. Well, um, in the event of a robbery, da 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 da, never throw the first punch. Well, what if the first punch knocks me unconscious, or breaks my jaw, or, or you know gives me brain trauma? Well, yeah, but then you're the de facto good guy. Yeah, but I'm the de facto good guy that's that's paralyzed or dead. What what does the you know, the moral high ground? Well, this this clerk has the moral high ground here. Okay, so the clerk took the moral high ground, and we'll never know. We'll never know why the clerk decided to take the moral high ground. What went into it? You know. No, I, I mean <clears throat> I have a pretty good idea, which is. He'd always been told by the media, his bosses and all that, just give them what they want and they'll leave. Just give them mm. what they want and they'll leave. Yeah, but that's a lot of supposition because there's we've talked about well, um, because, uh, two or three in the past month or two where there was the guy with the knife attack where he was a clerk at a gas station and he grabbed his knife and started fighting back. That wasn't a gas station. It was a... Um it was, was a convenience it? store. Was it? I'm I thought it was sure. a smoke shop or oh, something. Oh, it might have been a smoke shop. But there I think was it was a smoke shop where, in Vegas. Remember, there was another one where the guy in the convenience store had the shotgun. Oh, yeah. And he, he blasted at the guys that were walking in with their rifles. Yeah, but that, that doesn't counter the current situation. I mean, it, it's encouraging in terms of, like, good, but in mm. terms of, like, the whole just give them what they want, they'll leave. It's like, well, you know, whatever, right? But crap, you, threw, you completely threw me off. Um, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is we don't know if that's what these the the policy is at the store because there's other stores where people fought back. Well, this is probably this is I would say this is probably like a family owned deal. Yeah, right. Yeah, like that, this that, guy probably owns this. One of the owners, but it, yeah. it was a Chevron whatever the F Mart, right? Oh, I don't know. I thought it said like a. Chevron oh yeah, it's Chevron Food Mart. Food Mart. Yeah. Okay. Whereas the it, that's exactly it, is that remember the guy who stabbed the crap out of the other dude that he was like this is my shop and then the other dude yeah. that was his shop. That's Whereas true. this guy was probably yeah. just following corporate policy. Yeah, the and then Chevron Jared, corporate and then, policy. And then also, Jared, what you like, what you like to talk about is like, why would they do that? It's like, well, I mean, I, I, I didn't resist. I gave him the money. Why would he kill me? He got what he wanted. Because you're no longer, you're not a human to these monsters. Yeah. So it, you're I mean, just a thing. Like you said, we'll never know. But if I had to guess, I'd say it was corporate policy combined with, I mean, well, why would he though? there was no reason to kill the guy the guy was wearing the the robber was wearing a mask he got what he wanted he didn't get any resistance he should have skipped out that door happy as a loon yeah nope because well because well it, it also goes back to the the mirror thinking like i would never do that i i can't imagine someone doing that i would never do that yeah i know you never would but that doesn't just because you never would and you can't imagine that, I, I guarantee you when this story came out, there were people all over America saying, oh, I can't believe this. It's oh, I can't believe it. Why? Because I would, because you would never do that. So what does that mean? It's kind of interesting to me that the solution, the thing that works in almost every human case you could draw you could look at it uh, from a sales standpoint you can look at it from a negotiation standpoint you can look at it from surviving a robbery standpoint making yourself more human will always get you a better a more desirable outcome and the more you do to take that away from like in, in the robbery case that we're talking about here the less of a human you make yourself the easier it is for the person committing the crime to 
do whatever they want to do to make sure that you can't identify them or whatever to kill you. The more human you make yourself, the more difficult there are psychopaths that just don't care. But most people aren't like that. Well, the, the, and one of the things that, that, uh, I believe it was in on killing, uh, that Grossman brought up was how e even, uh, serial killers, when they're interviewed, essentially blame their victims for allowing themselves to become victims for not fighting back yeah. for allowing themselves to be victimized. They put the, they, they justified it in their heads. Cause they're like, well, this guy's, this person's not fighting back. So they must not want to live that badly. And it's not my fault that they didn't fight back folks. And, and I'm guarantee you that, that this, uh, this, and we, we could talk about the recidivist criminal. We could talk about the fact that this guy who murdered this clerk uh, was previously convicted of robberies, felonies, should have been in prison, but isn't because the, this guy's 26 years old and has been convicted previously of multiple felonies. Why isn't he in jail? Well, it's against the law for felons to have guns, so he won't have one. Really? Well, that worked out well. If we just had more gun laws, this wouldn't have happened. Really? There's laws against crack cocaine, and there's laws against methamphetamines, and they've got those. <sighs> well, this is different. How is it different? You have to be dangerous on demand. You have to decide that your life is worth defending. You have to decide, you have to say, when I'm put in a position to defend my life, I will do it. Not if, when. So moving on, we've got a, uh, <sighs> did you ever wonder whether or not socialism was evil? Well... I'm going to go with yes. Some people will say this isn't true. There's no way that's true. We got multiple, not one, multiple sources. First one, disturbing. Experts troubled by Canada's euthanasia laws. Now, hang on a second. Zach, what do they have in Canada that we should all emulate? Uh, socialized health care. Free, me free health care. It's socialized medicine. This is what we should do in America. Because it's the best thing ever. Yep. All right. Dateline Toronto. Alan Nichols had a history of depression and other medical issues, but none were life-threatening. When the 61-year-old Canadian was hospitalized in June 2019 over fears he might be suicidal. He asked his brother to bust him out as soon as possible. Within a month, Nichols submitted a request to be euthanized, and he was killed, despite concerns raised by his family and a nurse practitioner. His application for euthanasia listed only one health condition as the reason for his request to die, hearing loss. Nichols' family reported the case to the police and health authorities, arguing that he lacked the capacity to understand the process and was not suffering unbearably among the requirements for euthanasia. They say he was not taking needed medication, wasn't using the cochlear implant that helped him hear, and that hospital staffers improperly helped him request euthanasia. His brother Gary said, quote, Alan was basically put to death, end quote. Disability experts say the story is not unique to Canada, which arguably has the world's most permissive euthanasia rules, allowing people to, with serious disabilities to choose to be killed in the absence of any other medical issue. Many Canadians support euthanasia, and the advocacy group Dying with Dignity says that the procedure is driven by compassion, an end to suffering and discrimination, and desired for personal autonomy. But human rights advocates say that the country's regulations lack necessary safeguards, devalue the lives of disabled people, 
and are prompting doctors and health workers to suggest the procedure to those who might not otherwise consider it. Equally troubling, advocates say, are instances in which people have sought to be killed because they weren't getting adequate government support to live. Jeez. Man, I'm, it's, uh, it's, they're set to expand it. Canada is set to expand euthanasia access next year, but these advocates say that the system warrants further scrutiny now. Euthanasia, quote, cannot be a default for Canada's failure to fulfill its human rights obligation, end quote, said Mary Claude Landry, Landry sorry, the head of its Human Rights Commission. Landry said that she shares the grave concern voiced last year by three UN human rights experts who wrote that Canada's euthanasia law appeared to violate the agency's universal declaration of human rights. They said that the law had a discriminatory impact on disabled people and was con inconsistent with Canada's obligations to uphold internal human international human rights standards. Hey, you know what? There was a dude who was he was in charge of a country back in the 30s. Can't remember his name. But um he convinced the people that you know your retarded brother Billy, he would be better off if he went to a state hospital. And then when Billy went to the state hospital, Billy never came home and we never saw him again. And it was just better. A whole country was scrubbed of its disabled persons just because it was better for them. Do you remember what that guy's name was? No. No. It's I don't know. It's escaping me. You guys should look that up. Yeah, it was just, it was the humane thing to do the humane i cannot believe in the year 2020 i guess i can um whew. so if you're if and we talked about this off air so if in canada you're they're suicidal right and someone says you're suicidal they lock you up and then while you're locked up, they have you sign a piece of paper and they kill you. Well, it's okay then. So if so if you try to kill yourself in Canada, they'll they'll lock you up. But if the government assists you in killing yourself, well that's okay. I need to um, give you guys a little hint. That's a humane thing. What we were talking about earlier. So I'll continue the story. It says Tim Staten, director of the Canadian Institute for Inclusion and Citizenship at the University of British Columbia, described Canada's law as probably the biggest existential, existential threat to disabled people since the Nazis program in Germany in the 1930s. What? There, there's your hint. What? Oh. Real quick. Does something kind of funny I noticed about this. So you know the story we're talking about, about Canada's euthanasia laws and the veteran affairs? Yeah. Uh, the URL still has COVID in it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah. So if we, so there, so now we know, you're like, well, I've never heard this. This is something new. So we, the next story uh, is from globalnews.ca. Veteran affairs worker, quote, inappropriately discuss medical assisted suicide with a veteran wow uh, canadian forces veteran seeking treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder and a traumatic brain injury was shocked when he was unexpectedly and casually offered offered medical assistance in dying by a va canada employee sources tell global news Sources say that VAC service, that's the Veteran Affairs of Canada, uh, brought up medical assistance in dying or made. That's what it's called. Oh, what a night. What a lovely, what a lovely little acronym we have. It's made. It was unprompted in the conversation with the veteran. Global News is not identifying the veteran who was seeking treatment. Well, I mean, that's how they keep the the cost of the uh, socialized health care down. Is if you kill yeah. off most people who, or if you kill, start killing off people who want it, then cost less. That's true. You know, Rush Limbaugh called this. 
15 years ago at least, Limbaugh called it. He said, socialized medicine. Eventually, it'll get to the point where it costs so much that the solution will be, you know, just the humane thing to do is just let them die. So, at least in the United States, we have people who are advocating for vets not to kill themselves. But in Canada, like, wow. Yeah, I'm, I've been feeling kind of depressed lately, having a hard time getting out of bed. Well, have you thought about killing yourself? Excuse me? Well, you know, thought about killing yourself? Because, you know, we've got the MAID program, M-A-I-D. What now? Oh, they, the get here's the one. The VAC, the VAC, Veteran Affairs Canada, deeply regrets what transpired. The statement reads, you know, you know what they deeply regret? They deeply regret getting caught. They deeply regret that a news agency got a hold of this. That is what they deeply regret. Because this is socialism. Socialism is flat out evil socialism is evil socialism is dehumanizing so socialism says is that baby going to be inconvenient are you not ready for it have you thought about it and thought you know i'm not ready to be a parent you're ready to, to put your ankles up around your ears yeah but not ready to be a parent so let's go ahead and kill that thing and throw it in the garbage People are like, what? That's a woman's, that's a healthcare thing. No, it's not. It's murder. Well, then you go to the other end, the opposite of this. You know, those, those people don't really have any quality of life. So the best thing to do is just let them die. Who decides that? Oh, well, the state decides that. For the for the i don't know the the betterment for the what what do they call it the the what what do they say it for the not the social good the 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 best what is the term that they use to like it's not for the individual but for the for the social society. benefit i don't know idea oh needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few i don't, I don't no. know what you're going for here biden just said it he just said that that the inflation and uh, what he's doing is for the it's good for society as a whole. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're wondering, you're like, I don't really believe that socialism is evil. Okay, uh, we have one more story. Uh, just just in case you don't believe it, it's from August of 2022. Canada's euthanasia laws are frightening example of throwaway culture. How far into the show are we, Zach? One hour and eight minutes. Okay. (sighs) Yeah. Next time. August 17th, 2022. Yeah. Says Canada is engaged in an important and sometimes frightening debate about the right to life at the opposite end of the life spectrum from the debate going on here in the U.S., They are debating the widespread practice of euthanasia and whether or not the liberalization of euthanasia euthanasia laws is in accord with the values their courts highlighted when they tossed out laws prohibiting the procedure. In 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled in Carter v. Canada that prohibitions against assisted suicide and euthanasia violated the fundamental rights of Canadian citizens. The court held that an individual's response to a grievous and irremediable medical condition is a matter matter of critical uh, matter critical to their identity and their autonomy. Mm. The prohibition denies people in the situation the right to make decisions concerning their bodily integrity and medical care, and thus trenches on their liberty. Okay, stop right there. Do you? And our smart audience members just like freaked out and were squirming in their seats. So in Canada, 
the the premier, the, the the bastard son of Fidel Castro, went on television and said, "You do not have a right to use a gun for self defense." So in Canada, you do not have a right to use a firearm if you're a 98 pound woman and a 230 pound lunatic is going to rape and murder you you do not have a right to use a firearm to stop that person the same country says that if we don't let you kill yourself that that trenches on your liberty and your body integrity Jared, do you think maybe not letting a monster kill you or stab you to death? This is the same Canada where two whack jobs just went on a killing spree with knives. And uh, what, 15 dead, 10 critically injured or something like that? So in Canada, they're really concerned that not allowing people to go to a doctor and ask the doctor to kill them uh, is what's a violation of their bodily integrity and their liberty. But if somebody is flipping out and they're running around stabbing people to death, you, as a Canadian citizen, don't have the right to shoot them and make them stop doing it. Are you understanding what's going on here? It kind of sounds to me like Canada doesn't really give two fat rats rear ends about the humans and would rather that some of you inconvenient peasants just off yourselves. It says and down there and towards the bottom, it says this is brave new world territory and it actually and it absolutely is. It says, uh, in 2021, 10,000 Canadians died through euthanasia, and the numbers have increased by, uh, were increased 36% from 2019. Sounds to me that uh, the Canadians are clearing out their backlog of medical patients. How many people died of euthanasia in Canada? 10,000. 10,000 in 2021. Which was a 32% increase from um, 2020. And then a 36% had a 30%, 36% increase from 2019. 19. Okay. So that's... All right, can we, can, can we just have an honest conversation? This is all about clearing out the socialized medicine backlog. Well, you know, if, they, if we hook them up to a, a hose and, and ask them to push that button... Uh, and then the poison goes into them and they die, then we don't have to pay for them no more. But but I want to stay alive, and I don't want bad people to stab me to death while I'm walking down the street. Well, that's just too bad. Because according to Fidel Castro's bastard child, you have no right to self-defense in Canada. Apparently, uh, people are not dying fast enough from the uh, the mystery shots that they forced on people. I mean, they're 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 sterile, and and we're getting a, a whole a huge uptick in in uh, um, miscarriages. We've got that, but it's just not enough. Why is the government of Canada so concerned with? like low reducing the number of people in Canada. no it's not that it's it's about dignity it's about dignity and liberty it's about liberty yeah so i think there's two separate issues that we're maybe not combining into one but we're not addressing both of them mm-hmm. the first issue on the table is should it be or is it okay for a 
somebody else. It could be a government. It could be anybody else that's not you to decide whether you can or cannot take your own life. And then the second issue is the people that are recommending this service. So it is it acceptable or is it okay for a third party, a government, to tell you that you cannot take your own life? See, that's the that is the sticky situation. You're like, so if I attempt suicide and fail and they find out, they're like, Oh, you're suicidal, we're locking you up. You're like, whoa, whoa, yeah, what do you mean you're locking a, me up? Uh, that dude was in the thing because he was a potential harm to himself. So in order to save him from killing himself, they killed, killed him. him. Jared, why, why didn't they, when they caught um, Winston, when Big Brother, when he had to go, remember when he had to go to room 101? You remember that, right? Yeah, because he didn't need to get his mind right. Why, when they caught him and they found out that he was was not towing the line, why did they not just execute him? Because they they needed to get him to believe. Because he had to love Big Brother. Yeah. Then once he loved Big Brother, then it was okay for them to kill him. Because it's not enough for the government to control your life. They have to own your soul. In Canada, if you just as a person say, I don't want to live no more, I'm going to kill myself, and you fail, they will take you and lock you up because you're not allowed to do that. Well, what do you mean I'm not allowed to do that? You're not allowed. You are not allowed to take your own life. But a representative of the state, you're like, doctors aren't representatives of the state. The heck they're not. In a socialized medicine under you know, Canada's free health care. So part of the free health care is, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a doctor hook up this IV to you, and then we're going to put a red button right there. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and hit that red button. Are you ready yet? No. All right. Are you ready yet? No. Are you ready yet? Are, we, are you ready to hit the red button yet? Okay. When we found out that Adolf Hitler took mentally disabled and handicapped people and put them in special hospitals, and then they never came back uh, because they exterminated them. We called that euthanasia. You see, when I was growing up, we used to use the term euthanasia as a pejorative. It was bad. That's what Hitler did. That's what Mao did. That's what Stalin did. That was bad. We were taught that just uh, wiping out inconvenient people was a bad thing. That's what we were taught. When I was in elementary school, we were taught that, you know, the state just deciding that those people ha don't have a quality of life and exterminating them was bad it's 2022 and they're like well you know exterminating the retards isn't necessarily a bad thing what are you what now how did we go as a world culture from you know that was really wrong for hitler to take all the handicapped persons and and eliminate them he was a monster he is he is the quintessential he is the he's the world's villain right he is the the english western he is the villain of the western world why because he committed euthanasia so that's bad right yeah well un unless um uh, you know unless castro's bastard son says it's okay then well i mean it's it's about liberty and about body autonomy and about choice but in canada i can't choose to carry a gun to stop someone from hacking me to death on the street well no because you don't have a right to self-defense so in canada you don't have a right to self-defense but you do 
have a right to off yourself when when you become inconvenient. And that is socialized medicine in a nutshell. And the next time someone says to you, derp a derp, free health care in Canada, derp a derp, you say, oh, really? I didn't know that you were pro-suicide. I'm not. Okay. Well, here's the facts, Johnny. Those are the facts. Jared, Zachary. We'll bet Zachary do this one. Zachary, what's Howdy coming there. up this week on Student of the Gun University podcast? This week on the Student of the Gun University podcast, which comes out each and every Thursday, if you are curious, is the myth-busting home defense shotgun. This will be one of many uh, future myth-busting episodes. There you go. Everyone look forward to that. Once again, student SOT, is it SOTGU podcast or is it Student of the Gun University? Like, what is it listed as on iTunes? Uh, st- I think it's just Student of the Gun University podcast. Let me double check. I can check right now. Yeah, Student of the Gun University on iTunes, Spotify, all that good stuff. It comes out every Thursday if you want to give get even more uh, Student of the Gun good- goodness. It's a much shorter, more bite-sized uh more focused that's the word experience the, single the, the topic we, uh, sing, single topic easy to digest yes indeed and uh, delicious as well you and can, delicious it is you can delicious. get all the links you need to get at sotgu.com yep. that's right yes indeed. sotgu.com is where you want to go to get all your linkage not yes. peter dinklage though not not dinklage not that linkage uh and just as a quick bonus in case you guys didn't see it uh we did this week uh we replayed or we did a best of uh, about a year and a half ago we had james yeager come on the the legion of michael podcast and uh, this is obviously before his uh before his tongue went numb and and he had started having speech issues and so we we put that up at the top because that was that goes all the way back to early 2021 i know a lot of you guys are are new to that so if you missed it the first time around it's easy to find the legion of michael podcast all right tomorrow tomorrow bonus hour media mafia spreading lies and i'm not going to uh i'm not going to back down on this uh we we are in a situation where the organized mainstream legacy media whatever you want to call them are full-on propagandists for their criminal masters in Washington D.C. The uh, the uh, there's more of a, a a fornication show going on in New York. We've got a fighting fitness for you, and we also have a leadership lesson. So uh, you want to be there or be square, and you can do that by going to get sotg.com to listen to to get out on the grad program that's right you can do all of that i hope you guys enjoyed today's show i hope you learned the lessons i hope you take the lessons that we provided you and run with them until we are together again remember you're a beginner once you're a student for life We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.